The name of the presentation is Serum Derived Bovine Immunoglobulin Isolate Increases Peripheral and Mucosal CD4 T cell count in patients with HIV enteropathy. All right, thank you. I'm uh, very pleased to present this data on behalf of the other investigators of the Entera Health 6001 uh, clinical trial. Here are my disclosures. So by way of background that has uh, been uh, touched on very nicely by the previous session, um, in, in some respects, non-infectious diarrhea continues to be uh, a problem in patients with HIV with as many as 20% uh, in some cohorts uh, being identified with this problem despite um, uh, amongst those that uh, antiretroviral causes have been excluded or other opportunistic infections have been excluded. HIV enteropathy may be the direct uh, result of uh, HIV infection of the cells um, or impact on the ongoing inflammation, mucosal damage, or imbalances in the gut microbiota. And we also uh, heard mention in the previous session about the potential impact of microbiota on causes of increased uh, fibrosis and failed immune reconstitution. So we have been working with serum-derived bovine immunoglobulin uh, in this setting to address some of these questions. It is a uh, protein isolate that is um, a, a co-product of bovine serum albumin production, and it consists mainly of IgG and I, um, with some IgM and IgA purified from the serum of uh, the um, steer. I have for this uh, insert here uh, the pie graphs of the stool microbiota of the human and bovine species. And as Jason pointed out, the um, main phyla are mainly firmicutes and bacteroidetes, and there's extensive overlap between the two uh, species with uh, a smaller proportion being represented by bact uh, proteobacteria and others. So one can imagine that the circulating immunoglobulin in the uh, serum of the uh, bovine uh, species would have some activity in, uh, in the human gut disease. SBI is administered orally as a powder easily dissolved in water and um, is not absorbed uh, and passes through the gut. It's very uh, excellently, it has an excellent safety profile and it is classified as a medical food that is administered under the uh, supervision of a physician. Three years ago, we presented uh, the, uh, the results of our pilot study in eight subjects with HIV enteropathy where we noted significant improvements in intestinal CD4 uh, T cell counts in the lamina propria of the duodenum, GI symptoms, and other markers of intestinal function after eight weeks of treatment of 2.5 grams twice daily. This study was uh, designed then to be a larger uh, extension of that as a placebo-controlled study. Our objective was to evaluate the impact of SBI on markers of peripheral and mucosal immunity, GI symptoms, and stability of the cut um, microbial uh, communities. Entry criteria were really quite simple. Patients had to describe three or more unformed stools per day for at least four weeks duration and had to be uh, virologically suppressed with antiretroviral therapy for at least 48 weeks prior to screening. This was a 10-center uh, um, multi-phase study. The first was four weeks of placebo-controlled, blinded, randomized uh, cohorts. Subjects were randomized to either placebo or low-dose SBI and uh, at 2.5 grams twice a day or 5 grams twice a day. After four weeks, the placebo group was rolled over uh, to lower high dose and all subjects continued on their, um, on their assigned uh, treatment regimen for the 24 weeks of the clinical trial and uh, remained blinded to their dosage assignment. During that period, we uh, collected blood and uh, plasma at multiple time points as well as stool for the microbiome. 
and patients uh, reported on a daily basis a symptom diary. We also did a sub-study in eight subjects um, of uh, duodenal biopsies before and at the end of uh, 24 weeks of treatment to, to try to reproduce the findings of our pilot study. We enrolled 103 subjects uh, who were 31% females, good representation of minorities. The median CD4 count was 637, with the lowest quartile uh, perhaps one could characterize as being uh, immunologic non-responders in that they've been on uh, active antiretroviral therapy for a median of over eight years and uh, had not achieved a CD4 count in the normal range. These are the results of our symptom questionnaire studies, and patients use this pictorial uh, rating scale for uh, loose or watery stools. And what we found was a very profound placebo effect, where patients reported improvement, reduction rather, in the number of stools uh, without very rapid uh, reduction, without any uh, differences between the cohorts. We did note, however, that this reduction in the number of stools persisted uh, throughout the full duration of the study, and the analysis of the microbiome uh, from the stool samples from these time points is ongoing right now. Now, while we didn't see changes in the GI symptoms, we did proceed to analyze the objectives of the immunologic responses. And consistent with what we know about clinical trials of long-term antiretroviral therapy, what we saw in the cohorts of, uh, in the quartiles of patients, CD4s, in, that were already in the normal range, they maintained their plateau, having been on antiretroviral therapy for years. However, we did notice that the lowest quartile appeared to have uh, increases in their CD4 counts uh, uh, over the course of the study, so we looked at them more closely. And what we found was that of the um, 25 subjects who were uh, in the lowest quartile of CD4 counts at baseline, 10 were initially randomized to placebo and 15 uh, to the uh, treatment arms, and we combined low and high dose for this analysis. And what we found was that the, uh, at week four, the those receiving placebos, their CD4 counts had not changed, whereas those who were receiving SBI had experienced an increase of uh, 42 cells. And following that same group out for consistency on duration of treatment, um, they continued to have a CD4 rise of um, a median of 95 cells by the end of the study uh, period. Now I would like to move to the results of the um, duodenal biopsy sub-study. And uh, these tissue samples were um, analyzed for immunofluorescent antibody staining for uh, immune populations and uh, proliferation uh, markers. So in this analysis, the tissue uh, is stained for CD4 count. And you can see that they went from a median of 217 CD4 cells in the duodenal lamina propria um, prior to SBI. And at the end of treatment, this increased to 329 cells. This represented a median increase of over 145 cells uh, for uh, th these subjects. And to put this in uh, perspective, if you start a patient naive to antiretroviral therapy on, HIV, uh, on heart for nine months, you will only see about a 50 uh, cell rise in the duodenal lamina propria. So this was a, a very sub significant rise and actually uh, does reproduce the findings of our previous study where we had similar results. In addition, the other immunologic parameter that we can see was a consistent improvement in the CD4-CD8 uh, ratio that increased uh, in all patients. And finally, now moving to the epithelial proliferation biomarkers, we looked at KI67 positivity um, in the enterocytes per cell in the CRIPS. 
And what we found was that this uh, decreased in six out of the seven patients. And um, an, an additional marker of proliferation, panath cell density decreased, uh, and that's panath cells in the, uh, in the crypts, uh, decreased in all patients. Both of these uh, parameters are believed to be related to um, some stimulus of uh, inflammation and, and are correlated with uh, proliferation. And we believe that the sequestration of the bacterial antigen by SBI uh, caused these uh, reductions in uh, proliferation biomarkers. We would expect that since both of these uh, parameters are measuring the, what we believe to be the same phenomenon, that they would be highly correlated, that the decreases would be highly correlated uh, in, in the individuals, and, and that turned out to be the case. So in conclusion, SBI was well tolerated by patients receiving ART, although no difference in GI symptoms between treatment groups was observed, although the analysis of the microbiome is ongoing. SBI therapy did lead to increases in peripheral CD4 cells after four and 24 weeks among subjects in the lowest quartile of CD4 cells at baseline. Patients on SBI therapy for 24 weeks showed evidence of restoration of mucosal immunity with increases in the uh, density of lamin-appropriate duodenal CD4 cells consistent with the findings of our previous study where we saw a rise of 139 uh, CD4 T cells over the course of eight weeks of uh, treatment. So as was mentioned in the previous session, a great unmet medical need that our patients have who fail to restore their CD4 T cell count is that we, there is no intervention that's been shown to uh, increase that uh, further if they've been on suppressive ART for uh, quite some time. Oral SBI may be a novel strategy to restore mucosal immunity and impact systemic immune reconstitution among those patients who have not achieved normal CD4 T cells despite prolonged suppressive ART. I'd like to thank, in particular, the uh, subjects who were very willing to undergo a lot of interventions, and uh, needless to say, the most onerous of which is stool collection, but um, they, uh, it's, we also, I'd also like to thank our other collaborators and the other investigators at the sites of this study. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> you.